Hey, what's up, Facebook world? Uh, Ward Wrestling Live here, and we have another amazing, amazing wrestling mind and coach in our country uh, from the Southeast at, over in Georgia, uh, Coach Terry Allison. He was a uh, University National Greco champ, FILA Junior National runner-up, four-time Universal Greco finalist, U.S. Open Greco placer. Uh, he's coached five Super 32 champs, two Fargo champ, Junior Greco champs, three D1 All-Americans from Georgia, and uh, he's here with us uh, to talk about Terry Style Wrestling. Hey, what's up, Coach, man? Thank you so much for coming on. What's going on, man? I appreciate you having me. For sure, yeah. I got to get your logo up there. Uh, uh, send it to me. I don't know if I'm going to have to start rotating stuff in and out or just making things smaller. But Yeah, it's getting a little crowded. <laughs> I know I had Gonzo on before you, and I got to throw him up there. <laughs> he's cool. full of excitement. Um, but, yeah, man, well, first things first, obviously, we've all been kind of in a pandemic here so how has that affected terry style wrestling and your kids uh well it, it affected us a ton you know i think the thing that's affected us the most is not being able to compete not as much as not being able to train we we stopped our training in our gym for a little bit but i actually have a really cool garage uh set up with some mats and a sauna and workout equipment so what it's been able to do for me, I mean, my club's really small anyways. It's really focused on um, guys that are really committed and, you know, ha trying to obtain high goals. So I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work and a lot of, you know, specific stuff. So we watch a lot of film, work on a lot of stuff, and it's just been really been able to slow down and get ourselves better at wrestling, start examining the areas that we're weak in, be better in, so... But we miss competing, so that's been rough. Yeah, I think uh, probably you and everybody else, and um, we'll see what happens here. I know I just read something that down in South Florida, they just announced that they're closing the gyms and the restaurants back up because of the spike. So yeah, I don't know if that'll leak into the rest of Florida or not, but we'll see. Um, I mean, people want this gone. They just got to do. They got to. They got to sacrifice for a little bit so we can get rid of it. You know yeah that's that's i agree it's got to do your part you know it's it's not just about wrestling it's not just about us and individuals it's it's about the world and what's going on we need to do do our you know our thing we can do to help move us forward yeah i mean i understand the the fight to power and the uh, anti-authoritative <laughs> and uh they're not going to make me do anything i'm not a sheep kind of stuff i get it good for you i mean that's what makes America great. We all can have different opinions and still love each other. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, man, it's, if you want to get out of this, we just need to do the right things. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that, uh, that, that your guys have been at least doing something and you've been able to, to stay on top of them and, and get things done. Uh, and, and actually it's an honor to talk to you. I, I've been, I've been working on getting, uh, getting some more Georgia people on here. Uh, I had Coach Morris. I've had Bud Hennenbaugh. I've had uh, um, the the coach at Woodward. Uh, okay, Coach Reagan. Coach Reagan, and and so I'm I'm and I I've had Omi Acosta on. You know, I've had the the, yeah. the some of the colleges. So um, it's been good to 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 get you guys on here and uh, and be able to to talk to Georgia because I think Georgia and Florida were kind of like this. You know, I mean we. Yeah, we a lot of stuff together. We wrestle together, uh, especially up there on the state line. Uh, you know, I, I talked to like Coach Mike Crowder. He said that you know we do a lot with Georgia, so um, yeah, it, it'll be nice to to get us out of here. But first of all, I, I know Terry style wrestling is very specific. Um, so mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your club and, and your coaching style, and then you know, obviously with with Georgia wrestling and the rise of Georgia wrestling. Uh, you can kind of get into all of this. I'm sure it's all kind of yeah. tied together, but I know that, uh, um, and, and I, I think this happens with a lot of club owners. Well, not a lot, but but most club owners see our kids um, more than maybe the high school coach it's because during the off season, they spend more time with them. So I'm sure, you know, I've talked to coaches that say, yeah, we call down to Connor Beebe in Florida and ask about different wrestlers or Mike Palazzo or, or whoever and ask about local wrestlers in the area. So I think that probably is kind of happening with you as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, our being, clubs are very important in Georgia. There is a lot of restriction for the high school coaches in the off season, which is unfortunate, you know, but 
we kind of band together, you know, everybody's got their piece of the puzzle, right. Got their job. And, and, you know, you're, you're talking about Florida and Georgia. I think Florida and Georgia have a healthy rivalry in wrestling where they set the standard for the Southeast. And, you know, I, I mean, first and foremost, Florida set the standard for years and years with Brandon and coach Cozart and those guys and South Dade with uh, the coaches down there. And now Georgia's kind of getting to where, they're pushing pretty hard and it's getting a healthy rivalry and it's just drawing more attention to the South because there are good wrestlers down here and you just rattled off a bunch of names that you did interviews with in Georgia. We have a lot of resources in Georgia now coaching wise. There's a lot, you know, it's, there's another coach, Donovan Pannone. He has a big club with level up and then Pete Yates uh, is a two time all American at Virginia tech. He's got a club called technique wrestling and, you know, that's where a lot of the kids train and coach cars down in middle Georgia. So the clubs are pretty strong, probably stronger than they've ever been right now. And and not just one or two, but there's a bunch that have really good kids. And it's, it's definitely raising the level in Georgia for and sure. Is it true? You know, I, I had Chuck Morris on mm-hmm. and, uh, and he said, look, we all get together and, and, and we, we get our athletes together in a lot of the same rooms and we try to work yeah. with each other. And, you know, a lot of us are really good at different things and we try to, to help with that. Is that, the, you guys really kind of bond together? Oh, absolutely. I mean, and first and foremost, we're Georgia, you know, and you, you push the, the egos and the pettiness aside for the kids, right? It's not about the brand. It's about the kids and what, they're trying to accomplish these kids are ready to go you know we we're not having to force kids to train year round anymore we're not having to force kids to to believe that they can beat kids from pennsylvania or illinois or new york you know it's it's almost given like the the mentality of georgia wrestling has changed our our kids don't see other states as you know adversity they if they think they're expected to win you know they train just as hard they're in their club practices four or five days a week. They're in their high schools, you know, and all year long going to Fargo's going to super 32s and, and not just going and getting experience, but going and winning and expecting to win. It's, it's raised that level of competitive mentality that's carrying over in college with the Russell and Milhoff and Nessus that are just became all Americans in the past three years. And now, I mean, but we had, I think the last year was the most we've ever, we had 11 guys qualify for NCAAs. I could be wrong. Maybe it was, 10 or maybe it was 12, but, you know, we were qualifying more guys for NCAAs in the state of Oklahoma, you know, in the state of Iowa, we had the same amount as the state of Iowa, which is insane considering they have, you know, three, four division one schools. We have zero division one wrestling schools here, but yet our kids are still holding themselves to that level, that standard that these historic wrestling states are holding. And they're, they're not scared. Of it. They're not, they're not taking a back seat anymore. Are you starting to see, um, when I talk to coaches in the, in Florida and I ask, you know, what's the difference from Florida wrestling to like the big boys, uh, they all have the same set of, and they say, okay, look, our tops, which I think in Georgia too, our tops can compete with anybody's tops around the country. Absolutely. But we're not starting to see, at least in Florida, you're not start now. Maybe you're starting to see some generational stuff start to happen. Yeah. Are you guys seeing more of that now in Georgia to where that'll help the growth or help the depth? I think we're about five years away from that. But once that starts developing, yes, you're going to see it. And then, and that's the thing with, with Georgia wrestling and, and it's, it's no offense to the, the dads and the, the sport, but most of our kids are first generation wrestlers. Mine you know? Yeah. Same. Uh, same. <laughs> I grew up in Alabama, you know, so I'm, it wasn't not many dads and granddads wrestled, you know, growing up. So once we get through that a little bit, I think in like five years, there's going to be even more knowledgeable coaches. A lot of the kids are that are good in college are coming back and helping out Georgia. Hunter Gamble's been a huge part in Georgia in the last year, helping out. He's bouncing around the training center and helping. He was a couple time division one uh, qualifier. Um, and then we, we just, Ryan Milhoff's a head coach in, at, at Collins Hill now, his old arm will monitor. You know, he was an NCAA All-American. So the we just got a lot. It's coming. It's I, I think this is the beginning. I don't think this is the peak to begin to be honest. I think a couple of years ago we had a 
Crop and the and the Bullards and the Milhoffs and the Luhans and those guys that are all finished college now that are about to finish, um, where this new younger crop is going to take their momentum and just, I mean, take it even higher. Right now, I think there's 11 kids ranked in the top 20 in the country that are from Georgia right now. You know, they're not all competing in Georgia anymore, but they are homegrown. You know, they are Georgia kids. So what yeah. do you tell um what do you teach your students and what do you tell juniors and seniors out there to get prepared for the next level? Um, commitment, you know, what, what, you know, unfortunately it's hard to see what it's going to be like when you're at this age, the, the, the college wrestling room, it, I always tell kids this, it's, it's 10 times harder than you think it's going to be. You got to be prepared for that. So you got to be committed, you know, and that's not just going to practice, you know, doing stuff after practice, get an extra workout in your diet, your, how you peak for tournaments, how you prep for them. You know, I have this whole system with my group. We have a five week training camp for a national tournament, kind of like a UFC type thing where we, our weight descent starts about 14 days out. We are doing, um, Saturday before we leave for the tournament, we're going and doing a spa day, take them to uh, like one of these spas that have uh, a bunch of like, you know, saunas that aren't hot and cold tubs and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's about how it's going to be longevity, right? It's, it's how long, how well they take care of themselves. So I'm trying to teach them those kind of things, the high level, the high level, what a high level wrestler does. If you can teach those to 14, 15, 16 year old kids, now on the how important it is to take care of your body look if you're having if your knee's hurting don't just not come to practice what did you do to fix your to help it get better that's the kind of stuff that's going to be real important when you get to college that you know these kids overlook it now and somebody's got to tell them somebody's got to turn them into that mentality so it's not just the training it's everything it's the whole high level athlete mentality you know take care of yourself and train hard and train hard when you feel good if you don't feel good don't train hard just work really hard at getting to feel better what do you, um, what is one thing that you would tell a kid to do as a, uh, like an exercise or a drill that you would recommend to do every day? You know, I know there's different practices and different yeah. things, but that one thing that you would say, hey, I think this is most important for you to stick to every day. Well, if we're just talking about wrestling, definitely stretching, you know, some kind of yoga, some kind of stretching, some something to take care of yourself your flexibility is going to be huge because especially for the younger kids because they're going to put muscle on and they're going to get stronger but if their you know joints and their tendons and stuff are tight and they're not flexible that's what's going to cause injury so i would say wake up and stretch or you know can't do too much stretching and you can't try some yoga i think yoga is great for wrestling personally and we have a bunch of kids that do that stuff now that's awesome um I know you mentioned uh, uh, mentioned some of this, but what uh, what are you doing to to help these Georgia kids uh, get seen by these colleges and get to the next level? How are you getting them on the map? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, this is probably the most important thing for me. As a, <coughs> you know, I, I I think the word coach means you know has a lot of different meanings it's not just in the practice room pushing a kid hard or yelling at them when they need to be yelled at or holding them, holding them accountable but also learning them and understanding them and, and being you know family so you get to know who they are and what they want so that you can start relaying that message and that's the biggest thing for me is finding the fit so i do a lot of the work myself i just contact the coaches and say hey i think this kid fits your program great man you might want to take a look at him and he might be you know, number one kid in the country, he might be a kid that's under the radar. There's a lot of times there's kids under the radar that I know what their work ethic is and I know what kind of kids they are, but it's hard to see what kind of kids they are at the tournaments because you're not just, you're looking at results, but a kid that gets in the blood round at five times. And I mean, I, I, I give you a great example and is Jackson Osario. He's Stanford's 125 pounder now. The kid was always right there, you know, in the quarters, in the blood rounds at every tournament, but, you know, kind of got overlooked a little bit because of that, but they didn't know what kind of person he was 
in the training room and I knew and he got to college and you know the Stanford coaches pull him out of red shirt and he qualifies for NCAAs this year as a true freshman coming from Georgia I think that at 125 pounds that's huge so just helping trying to find, figure out what the kids want and what they need and what they you know financially what's important and then start making that connection making the calls so, you know don't rely on these coaches to call you call them or get a coach to call them you know start start doing the process and the work the process can begin earlier than you know their sophomore year with help from somebody else so that's what I try to do I try to be a median in between the kids and the coaches and just go ahead and get it started that, that's very important to me is it um when 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 you look at these kids so you could have somebody who is a an all-world talent but maybe on the academic side they struggle they need some personal attention mm -hmm. and this might be like a an Iowa talent a Michigan talent right. whatever Ohio State talent Penn State talent but would is that a kid you would sit down with and say look yeah you're good enough to be there but I recommend you look at one of these other schools that maybe are smaller class sizes smaller just to get them the success and the education they need moving forward or or do you maybe uh, how do you handle that kind of that kind of student i think it depends on what what coaches are at the university what kind of personality they fit with if you got a coach you know that's gonna take care of the athlete i, I have had one of those athletes and i sent him to a smaller school um because it was the perfect fit for him and the coach there was the perfect guy to do that for him and that that guy was tim flynn at when he was at edinburgh and i knew he would take care of my guy and get him to where he needs to be kid was super focused uh on winning wrestling matches and less focused in the classroom but in the right environment those things can all come out good and it, and it did for him so that's good it feels like a lot of i've been doing this show since april 6th and it feels like Edinburgh is like the the gatekeeper in Division yeah. One. Yeah, I, I I love that program. Tim Flynn did a, a fantastic job there, man. It's it's all about culture. He, he he built a culture there that that turned out some great wrestlers, and 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 it takes a special kind of person to go there too. You know, you got to be kind of that that oddball. It's kind of like the the school for misfits a little bit. It seems like they go there and then they hit that bigger school sometimes yeah sometimes that's funny so um first of all i mean t tell me about car racing <laughs> that's got to be pretty dope growing up around that yeah uh you know i come from a, a long lineage uh of nascar drivers uh my great uncle is bobby allison and my uh my uncles or Davey Allison and growing up around them. And I was young. Davey died when in a helicopter crash when I was eight years old and that kind of got the whole family out of it. But up until that point, it was, I was at the tracks all the time, Talladega. And there's actually a YouTube video that somebody sent me to about a year and a half ago of me and Davey's lap at victory lane. Uh, when I was like four years old, he's just holding me in his lap in victory lane. That's pretty cool. Pretty funny. So, do you still go to races? Uh, it's been a while. Not, not as, not as much anymore. Time and I used to just go to Talladega every year because they had a little uh, setup for our family, but they kind of stopped doing that as much now. So it's a little. Is, is Bobby still involved? No, not really. No, I he's not really moderating or whatever yeah I don't, I don't know too much i don't know i don't know exactly but not really it's involved no and then i have my cousins and stuff didn't didn't ever get into it so, so coolest uh coolest car coolest track you've been in uh, i guess i guess being in a nascar I, I got to do the driver experience before and turned about 20 laps and that was a good time uh Coolest track. I like Bristol. It's my favorite track. It's like a stadium with NASCARs in it. They're, you know, it's a half mile track, so it's loud and fast and crazy. Cool. Do you still watch it on TV though? Are you still like into it? <sighs> to be completely honest, I never was that into it because I was so young when I got out of it. I, 
I mean, if, if my uncle wouldn't died, I could have probably potentially been doing that now myself, but I do watch it sometimes Sundays on, so, you know, you catch it. It's a little, uh, it's know. not the same. It's not the same on TV. I tell no, people I got no. to, I got to experience Daytona maybe three or four times. And I remember the first time, uh, <laughs> Chuck Morris said he's going to throw you on his head, on your head. <laughs> uh, Come on. And I tell people that it's, it's not when you're there in real life and you hear the rumble in your chest and you feel the energy. Cool. It's, uh, it's awesome. He says, best Greco coach. <laughs> hey, so uh, I see, can, can we hear you jam on the guitar? Ah. Uh. That is definitely not tuned at the moment. <laughs> I haven't touched that guitar in a while. I see it behind you. I was like, man, maybe we can get him to. It's more of a decoration than it is an actual instrument now. <laughs> Chuck said you're the real deal. <laughs> Appreciate that, buddy. George is strong, right, Chuck? <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. Hey, so uh, what's more prestigious, 32 or Fargo? Ooh. That's a, that's a tough one. Um, prestigious. I, I mean, I still think Fargo, you know, is junior freestyle is, it's just what I grew up with in my, in my generation was the tournament and, and super 32 is obviously amazingly tough, but I think if, uh, if it was in the summer when Fargo is, I would say it, but guys that are wrestling in July and wrestling in North Dakota are the real deal. So I still hold that to the top for that reason. You gotta be pretty committed to be wrestling in Fargo in July and staying in dorms for two weeks. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rough, it's a rough, it's a rough tournament. Man. It brings out the strong. What, uh, and I'll go through my other 10 questions, but what kind of feat is it when you see a kid like Echimendia walk onto a Greco Fargo tournament, never doing Greco before? Yeah, he wrestled, he wrestled my kid at Fargo last year. <laughs> How'd that go? Not good. He was a man. He, he shook, shook my hand after the match and was like, uh, he was like, I'm 19. I go, okay, well, you're pretty much a man. <laughs> Wrestled my 16 year old. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, them uh, the, 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 in Cuba, you grow up fast. My friend. Yeah, right. So, no, it's, it's impressive. That dude's unbelievable. He's, uh, I'm excited to see what he does in college. Yeah, I, th I think he'll. I think he'll do pretty well. He's got a tremendous story, and he's obviously a great kid. So I hope the best for him. That's cool. So, peach cobbler or pecan pie? I'd prefer peach cobbler. <laughs> Dixie or Tulsa? Oh, Tulsa for sure. Uh, vacation, Blue Ridge or Savannah? Savannah. The Schultz or the Farrell? Say that again. The Dave Schultz or the Bill Farrell? Schultz was always the toughest tournament, in my opinion. The Falcons or the Braves? Ooh, Falcons. I'm a Red Sox fan, so I can't say Braves. <laughs> the Pan Ams or the Cadet Worlds? Uh, Pan Ams. Georgia barbecue or Alabama barbecue? Oh, Alabama barbecue all day. <laughs> Dreamland is the best barbecue in the world. <laughs> the Reno or Body Bar? Body bar. Uh, Coca-Cola World or the Atlanta Aquarium? The Aquarium. <laughs> and then walk no, over no, the Coca-Cola World, no, right? Football Hall of Fame is my favorite place, obviously. I'm a big Alabama fan, so. Uh, the Hall of Fame, the College Football of Fame? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's in Atlanta now. It's really cool. Oh, man, I, I was there. I didn't know that. I went, to, I went to the Aquarium, so I was able to verify why people say the Atlanta Aquarium is the best in the world. It was super dope. I love it. It's unbelievable. And uh, and then I was able to walk across that little park there. Yeah. And have a nice ice cold Coca Cola. Yeah. Yeah. In whatever flavor I wanted. Park. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Hey, uh, Coach Allison, this has been great, man. I, I really appreciate you coming on. It's been an honor to talk with you. Uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about before we go? Is there anything we missed? Uh, I mean, no, I think I'm good. I just want to say, can say a little more about Georgia wrestling and, you know, I want to give a lot of props to a lot of, uh, people that have set the standard for it. Like Coach Arturo 
he's definitely someone you should probably get on here. Your hey, show. send him my link. Send him all my link. I told Chuck Morris that too. Please share my yeah. link. And Coach Reagan, please share my link. And uh, Bud Hennenball, please share my link. Uh, uh, you don't have to ask permission. I'll see when they sign up and we'll get together. And I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll try to get them on it for you. But there's there's been a lot of people that Georgia wrestling is where it's at for, for many, many, many reasons. There's not one one person that's responsible. and But there's a lot of people that have dedicated their lives and, you know, everything to help these kids get the resources they have it's it's amazing we need a division one school badly but uh you know we'll see if if that comes you know hopefully in the next 10 years maybe sooner yeah put one in florida put one in georgia yeah, put one uh, somewhere where the southeast can go right yeah i mean we need we need more more wrestling for sure we we do have a, some good schools here now but we need a division one program as well be huge i like it I, i'd love to see a miami hurricane florida state wrestling rivalry yeah that would be sweet <laughs> or, or how about a georgia georgia tech yeah yeah exactly i think i think people would be surprised at how much support wrestling would get in the south if we actually brought it back i think it would get tons it'd be fun well hey coach allison man i really appreciate you coming on and anytime you want to talk hit me up we'll do it and uh feel free to share this with anybody and uh, feel Absolutely. free to post whatever you want in the group as far as what you're doing and uh, videos and anything you'd like. So uh, awesome. I appreciate you and thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on. It's been a good time.